Quantum physics is the accurate description of the microscopic world of atoms and particles. It's the most successful theory ever discovered by humankind. It's led to most of the modern technology, like all of electronics, the transistor, computers, lasers. It's led to more than half of the entire economy. The theory of quantum mechanics started by asking big questions. What is the nature of reality? What is the nature of locality versus non-locality? Finding new aspects of physics at the underpinnings of the whole show. The Institute for Quantum Studies was created to bring together the top physicists in the world in an environment that was very conducive to interaction and discoveries and breakthroughs. Our mission is to make progress in understanding the most difficult feature of physics today, which is the foundation of quantum mechanics. The way science progresses is through collaboration of the best minds. So what we are trying to do with the Institute is create the framework in which people can come together and spend uh, extended periods of time working together, developing ideas, and develop the kind of uh, intellectual community that is the only way in which you can actually create new ideas. In the history of the development of quantum mechanics, the critical points occurred when these creative geniuses were brought together, for example, in the famous Solvay conferences in Brussels, Belgium. The Solvay meetings were a time that were very important in the history of the development of physics and quantum mechanics in particular because it allowed the leading scientists to be able to come together and talk about the, the new scientific discoveries, ways of thinking about them, ways of calculating, and to be able to try to form some common understanding of what this meant and how to understand it in the best way. The Institute for Quantum Studies is in the best tradition, I think, of that. One of the most successful examples of a question that was at the foundations of quantum mechanics was the question of, is nature fundamentally local or is it fundamentally non-local? In the time of Newton, classical mechanics, this was all local theory. Like when you go play pool, one billiard ball hits another one, the interaction is local. So that's how we experience the world. Einstein and his collaborators noticed something very strange about the theory of quantum mechanics. And even though Einstein was one of the fathers of the theory, it bothered him very much. And he said, the theory can't be this way. The implications of this means that quantum mechanics is non-local, meaning in some sense that you don't need the two billiard balls to hit each other, but they can be connected in strange ways across huge distances. Not much happened after that until a paper written by David Bohm and Yakira Horonov. And they showed for the first time how this skeptical framework that Einstein posed was actually part of the real structure of the world. And this subsequently led to work by Bell, which led to experimental tests. So a philosophical question was eventually nailed down and, and confirmed in real live experiments. Here it has made uh, discoveries, each one of which is a gem. One example is the Aharon of Bohm effect. It shows when you have a particle that is located in one place in space, and there is a force, an electromagnetic force, at another place. That force at another place can still affect the particle that is far away from it. And this has led to many, many new experiments, even hopes for a new important application. Yakir Haronov is a creative genius of extraordinary capability. I have just watched him make huge breakthrough after huge breakthrough relentlessly. The 2009 National Medal of Science to Yakir Aharonov, Chapman University, for his contributions to the foundations of quantum physics and for drawing out unexpected implications of that field, ranging from the Aharonov Bohm effect to the theory of weak measurement. We count now three people that won Nobel Prize David Gross. Tony Leggett, François Angler, he foresees that will exist a particle that's, that's the most important particle responsible for the masses of all the other particles, and this was discovered in CERN in 2013, and because of that he got the Nobel Prize together with Higgs. The thing that François is working on is exactly uh, discoveries that Yakir Aharonov made. In particular, he's looking at applying something called the weak value to trying to understand how black holes work. And so the nature of time, the new aspects of reality that come out of a weak value, applying that to the event horizon of a black hole 
allows you to discover all kinds of new aspects of how black holes work. The Institute for Quantum Studies is interested not only in the foundational questions, but in addition, how can we actually apply that to invent a new kind of quantum computer, to invent new ways of doing uh, communication between two different points. The Institute for Quantum Studies has a big investment in experimental physics as well. And we've built from scratch a large laboratory. We've won a lot of competitive grants from the Office for Naval Research. Part of my job as a program officer is to locate the efforts that I think represent the best value to the government in the form of doing very innovative work. That has been one of the features of the current activities here. What we are trying to develop here is to reach room temperature superconductivity. It will create fantastic opportunities for people to get acquainted with quantum physics laws. It's even hard to imagine what will happen when we will have these objects. A chance to come to an institute like this and spend your time away from the day-to-day -day worries focused on the deep scientific questions with the leading thinkers from around the world is really the essential thing for inspiring creative new ideas. During all these meetings, we of course bring in our students. It's really very inspiring to actually watch physicists get on the whiteboard and just make a profound fundamental new discovery right there on the spot. Many of the decisions that our country is going to be called to make hinge on understanding the nature of the universe. So we offer workshops, we offer lectures, we have uh, talks for the public at large. We record all of our conferences. Physicists can watch all of those uh, talks and get right up to the, the state of the art of the latest thinking on, on many of these very exciting areas. We started a new journal called Quantum Studies, Mathematics and Foundations. So we make this freely available. We serve as a resource by having all this world-renowned expertise here and people come just to connect with these incredible physicists and learn more and interact and collaborate.